Hi, this is Simon Obstel, and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. Now, way back in the summer of 2016, I published a demo that looked like this. Okay, Jarvis, let's get this show on the road. But I never quite got around to making the tutorial, but now maybe it's the time to have a proper look at it. So, first of all, let's check out our project settings. So, I've got 1920 1080. I've got 25 frames a second, because that's the frame rate of my clip. And I've got a duration of 8 seconds. So, the first thing I'm going to do is come to my assets and import the asset called Sebastian, which is a clip very kindly shot for me all these years ago by my good friend Sebastian Matthias Weisbach. So, what we're going to do with Sebastian is we're going to come to the first frame of the sequence and we're going to add behaviors, motion tracking, analyze motion. Make sure to, make sure to turn on our overlays. I'm going to set the scale to 40% maximum curvature and I'm going to use this freckle here as the reference point. So I'm using this newer version of the motion tracker and I actually think it's really rather good. It used to be just point and now you've got object which is a kind of a planar tracker of sorts. And it definitely gives better results, I think. So then we'll click the analyze button here and then we'll track forward and it's pretty good track. And now we've got what we need. So then I'm going to make a new group here and I'm going to use the circle tool and I'm going to create a circle like that. It doesn't really matter too much what it looks like. It's just a dummy object. So then what I want to do is I want to link the position of this dummy object to the tracked source. So I'm going to come to position, right click, add parameter behavior, link, and then we'll select the Sebastian layer. Now, the source parameter doesn't want to be the actual position of the layer. It wants to be behaviors, analyze motion, tracker root, analyze shape, transform, position, all. Seems like a big mouthful. So now that's actually tracking along with the, the, the tracked result. Again, let's come to the end here. So what I want to do is I want to position this in the center of his forehead, but I also want to position it back, as it were, behind his head. And to do that, I'm going to enter a Z offset of negative 1,000. So now in, in terms of Z, it's probably somewhere behind his head. Then what we can do is we can come to the X and just scroll that till we get it in the center. Come to the Y and scroll that till we get to the center of his, between his eyes, just like that. So I've called that circle center. And then what I'm going to do is duplicate it. So right click duplicate. And in this instance, I want to be able to track his two eyes. So I don't want that Z offset. So let's kill that. And then let's again, just move this over. I'm going to concentrate on the left eye here or the eye that's on the left of the screen. Much easier to, I think, just describe it as the left eye. Okay, so let's call that one left. And then let's duplicate that, right click, duplicate, and again, come to the, the offsets. And we just need to move that over so it's on the eye that's on the right. And we can rename that as right. So now that we've done our setup, we can start to import our HUD elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a object new group, and I'm going to turn this group to 3D because we want our HUD to have some nice 3D depth to it. So I'm going to import from my Assets folder everything that's called Flight. Those there. And then I'm going to select all of those, everything that's called Flight, come over to Properties, and set the Blend Mode to Screen. So what I've done is I've rendered these out without Alpha, just to save on space. And, you know, setting it to screen effectively gives us the same result. So then to this group, I'm going to apply behaviors, motion tracking, match move. And what I want to do is I want to match the movement of that eye that's on the left. So I'm going to select 
that as the source. And we don't want rotation, and we want to mimic source rather than attach it to the source. So then I'm just going to scroll in the exposition just to move this over like so for the time being. So that's negative 500 if you want to enter a value for that. And then I'm going to come to behaviors, basic motion, point at. And for the point at, I'm going to use the center. So the center circle, I should say. So drag that in there. And we don't want any transition. We don't want this to be animating. So it's going to be like that. So then we'll, let's open up the position for the group here. And I want to set that Z position to 720. And I'm also going to just scale this down to around 60%. And now I think you'll see that if we, that as we play through, that's actually locking pretty well. So both in this orientation, because it's orientating towards the back of the head in terms of its Y rotation, and it's being locked to this left hand eye, or the eye that's on the left, I should say. Now, at this point, I just want to say that what we've done here is good enough, but it's not quite right in terms of the position of that dummy object at the back of the head. And at the end of this tutorial, I will show you a, a better way of doing it. But anyway, let's carry on. And then what we can do is we can offset the positions in Z of these various elements. So let's just have a think about what I'm going to do here. So maybe I'm going to move the flight rings. So that one there, let's just maybe move that back. In actual fact, it's 80 pixels, positive 80 pixels on Z. And then I think I might take the thing called bezel and go the other way, move that out like that. So negative 80 pixels on Z. And actually what I'm going to do with that flight base here is actually just increase its scale quite a bit. So let's go for like 175. So that's that kind of map effect there. That's quite a nice additional element there. So you'll see that that kind of the parallax on those elements has really kind of brought the thing to life. Let's turn off those control elements there. They're kind of getting in the way. Turn off that group. Okay, so I'm going to call this group left HUD. And then I'm going to make a new group, object new group. Uh, again, it's going to be 3D and come to import. And this time let's import the assets called suit. Bring all of those in. Again, we need to select them all, come to properties and set the blend mode to screen. So then we need to do the opposite thing with this group here, this right hand group. So first of all, again, we're going to add motion tracking match move. We want to match move it to the, what, we're, what I'm calling the right, which is the opposite eye like that. It's like so, let's turn off rotation. Let's select mimic rather than attach. And then let's also add as before, behaviors basic motion point at, and I'm going to close down that left HUD so we get a bit more space. I want to use the center as the source for the point at. Again, let's set the transition to zero. And then again, let's make sure that we move this out on Z so it's doing what we want it to do. So 720 on Z. And again, let's scale it. Come on, we did there. We did 60. Let's go for 60 again, like so. And now. We've got this HUD on the other side. I think this HUD could probably be a bit larger. Let's go for 70 on that. And again, we can just offset some of these elements. So what have we got here? We've got that inner. And what I want to do with that is I want to move it back a little bit. So let's go for 80 pixels. So positive moves it back because of the way we've flipped everything with the point at. So let's move that back towards his head. Let's maybe this suit outer, let's go for negative 80 on that. And then what's this thing here? That's that one there as well. Let's also go for negative 80 on that. It just gives us a little bit of, of parallax on that whole thing. So I don't think I'm going to go much further with this particular stage of the tutorial. 
what I might just do is just show you the kinds of things one might actually want to do in terms of the animation. So as he, as he kind of lifts his head here, so let's come to about frame six, I'm going to come into the, the left hand HUD, the thing called flight rings. I'm going to set a keyframe, set that to zero, and I'm going to step forward one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and bring that scale up to 100 again. I don't know if we can see this. Yes, you can. So you see that, you know, as he's looking, the, the HUD turns itself on. So it's this kind of animation that we're going to be doing when we look at uh, el elaborating this scene a bit more. So as I mentioned earlier, the rigging that we've done for this head assembly is adequate, but we could actually make it better. So I want to show you that now. I'm actually going to turn off the HUDs altogether because they're going to distract us here. And I want to turn back on this group with the dummy objects in it. And I'm actually also going to turn off the two eyes here, the right and left. We just want to focus on this center. Now I want you to consider where you'd expect that to be if it were genuinely behind his head. I mean, obviously it's back in Z space, but as he turns his head, it's not really in the right place. We'd expect it to be sort of further back here as he's looking over here. And uh, when he's looking the other way, we expect it to be further over to the left here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this link and what I'm actually going to do is set the scale to negative one. I'm also going to set the Z offset to zero, the X offset to zero, and the Y offset to negative 480. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to properties and I'm going to add another link to take care of the Z. Oddly enough, you can actually do this. You can add a link on top of another link. So at the moment, all three properties are linked, but I can separate out the Z by adding a new link to it. So add parameter behavior link. And again, we can select Sebastian. We need to do that thing of coming to behaviors, analyze motion, tracker route, analyze shape, transform position. And in this case, we just want Z because that's the only parameter that we're linking. And we will set that offset as before to negative a thousand. And now I think hopefully you can see that that's much more as though it's at the back of the head. It centers up. And as he looks this way, it, it moves to the opposite side of the head and so on. So it's a slightly more sophisticated rig that will give a little bit more of a, a realistic result. So let's just turn off, turn these HUDs back on again. And you have to trust me that this is actually slightly better. You'd have to look at them very, very closely to notice the difference. But I thought it's probably worth just showing you how to do this properly. So that's it for this first part. In the next part, we'll look at making this scene a whole lot more interesting with some extra animation, some compositing tricks, some grading and so on. So I hope you can join me for that next part. And thanks very much for watching.